looks like it worked. All right. Now, I was thinking, uh, I was out scooping poop in my backyard. Not mine, my dog. And I was thinking about the, the majority of Facebook livers, if you want to call them that. The, the two live crew. And it seems like there's not a whole lot of overlap, which is kind of cool. You know, Ryan Kettering, he's been on a tear lately. Of course, he's going to talk about marketing strategy. Uh, there's Ryan. Let me get him in here. Courtney, he's going to talk about being a successful, busy one trucker. There we go. Sorry. I think my fingerprints are fading on me. And then you got Waldo. He seems to go live every 20 minutes so you can watch him live his life. Not Crap parties with Mr. Guru Bullshit Detector. Who else we got? Sager. Sager's usually either in the middle of it, of something interesting or promoting something cool. Usually having to do with his products, but that's to be expected. You got to love him. Uh, help me out here. Who's another big Facebook liner? Um, Nate Brock, little redhead kid. <laughs> so well, huh? There we go. Can everybody hear me? I can hear you. No feedback, right? No. Oh, I got oh, oh. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. you're good. You're, everything's good. All right. Cool. How much, uh, how much How much? do you pay attention to Facebook Live presentations that seem to go off on the hour, every hour, on the, every 20 <laughs> well, there, minutes? Was... There was one that went off last night with somebody in a hot tub, and I immediately didn't. I logged in and logged out. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to see Cranmore's Chi-Chi's, huh? <laughs> yeah, uh, I was wondering where all those bubbles were coming from, so I didn't, didn't go there. I've been known to do a hot tub video or two. Usually I get into trouble when I do those. So been... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I do, um, you know, I probably need to do a few more myself, but I don't always check them out. I'm, if I see yours yeah. come up or something that I know is going to have some quality information and not just, you know, shooting the breeze. Yeah, I, I'm guilty. I've done, a, you know, a couple of those. Hey, look at me ones, which are usually pretty stupid. But I try and yeah. keep it more to a technical level. You know, I mean, it's it's good I to have last fun. Night and I, that went really well on the yeah. OP yeah stuff. I, enjoyed it. I mean, it's good to yeah. have fun online. It's just you know, if I'm going to go online, I want to have something hopefully substantial yeah. to say. Yeah, yeah. I try and plot these out. I'm not over bombarding people doing them every day, every ten minutes like that. Udi fella, I'm not yeah. sure what what. You gotta love Dan, yeah. but. Man, oh man, does he overdo it? What's funny is I did a Facebook live with him about kicking the Facebook habit because he had I hadn't seen him in a while. And he told me he quit. It's like, oh, would mm. you come back on and do video? And, oh yeah, yeah. And ever since then, he's done like ten a day. So apparently, I ruined his uh, track record there. Yeah, I I don't know how you get ten a day in. I mean, uh, we just got back from estimating a big travertine job, so it's I do what I can and post when I can, but usually we're out there working. Yeah, so, yeah, you're a busy guy. So, I try, I hopefully, for those yeah. of you that don't know, all two of you, this is Brian Thompson without a P. That's correct. Uh, I, I don't, I know everybody in this industry. I don't know anybody who knows more about grout tile cleaning than Brian. So, Brian, I thought you'd, I, I'd let you spend a few minutes to tell us about your history. One with Turbo Force. Yeah, yeah, two, that was. Uh, brand. Yeah, I was thinking about that just the other day. I, it, it was um, 2005. When I went to work for George Burns, who's the originator of the turbo. Back then, we called it affectionately the bowl on the stick. That was the black one. Remember that one with a single handle? It had a black yeah, bowl. Yeah, and I was, and, I was talking to Markovitz about that. Yeah. When yeah. I was there in your town. Yeah. But when did the, the first turbo force, you know, the TH40. That's right. As we know it now, really hasn't changed at all. When did that first hit the... That, well, the so it, it was originally the, the um, just the turbo. There was no hybrid because the hybrid is the blue one. So the original black one was the turbo, and that had a powder-coated handle, single, you know, really cheap right. made. It, that was the one that was distributed just through back when it was, for uh, us old guys, Bridgepoint Hydroforce. You know, before 
Interlink and all that. So back at Bridgepoint Hydroforce, we had that whole deal that Hanks Brothers had the original um, exclusive on that tool and sold it for like 1400 bucks. I mean, it was crazy. And that exclusivity went away because they thought they were going to put George out of business by creating the SX-12. But George had already, and Mark Markovic had already had the turbo hybrid in mind and created that and came out about six months after the SX-12 came out at about 2005-ish, 2006-ish when I went to work for him. And it so immediately- the Hanks had exclusive on the original turbo? But they had an exclusive, that's what. With the SX? Yes, correct. So George only sold through Bridgepoint Hydroforce, Turboforce did. Uh, and yeah. that's why the, the, the Hanks brothers put a premium price tag on a tool that only cost 250 bucks to make and they sold it for $1,400. And, right, right. and, and, and then they, they came out with their SX-12 thinking that they were gonna put I, uh, George out of business, Turbo out of business because they didn't think that he would put enough money in to build a tool that compete with SX-12. Well, they didn't know that he had already had that all in market. and we had our first prototype came over from China and it was already built and tested Two months after the SX-12 came out, he waited a few months so that he could really make sure it was to his quality level. And when it sold, when we came out and sold the first ones in 05, 06, it just completely, I won't say it took over the market, but it's still the best selling tool in the industry today. All the Turbo Force tools are. But so that I worked for George for on and off for five years and then he started the master's touch and i was one of the lead instructors for the master's touch business opportunity but, yeah but how did you get in with george and what was your, your oh, cleaning well, experience prior well to that, that that was that was what was interesting i had no cleaning experience i was a diesel mechanic machinist for 15 years and i got laid off and he and i were friends and he said hey i think i got a job for you you know i won't pay a whole lot but you know if you've ever have you ever, I said, no, I don't know anything about cleaning hard surface. And so, you know, he just put me in the sales side of calling distributors and saying, hey, you want to buy the new turbo for half, at, at twice as good a tool for half the price. Because we went to market at seven ninety nine for the new turbo hybrid, uh -huh. not 1400 bucks for the original one. And so we were just taking orders right and left. So I was just an order taker at that time. And then he said, you need to learn more about the business, the cleaning business. And so I went and got my IIC or C certifications and SMT and FCT and, you know, started, you know, reading Clean Facts magazine and ISS uh, magazine, all the, you know, trying to get as much knowledge as I could. And then, you know, just training myself and then eventually uh, started gaining enough confidence to where I could advise people on tile and grout cleaning, which then he opened up the master's touch. He had another lead instructor who I sat under for a year or so, and then I became the lead instructor. And then I went from um, Turbo slash Master's Touch. Legend Brands hired me, and that was right when they took over the Blue Line plant up in Prescott from uh, Tom Fielding when they bought him out. And we had two truck mounts then. We had a 270 and a 370. So I sold the first sapphires into the industry along with tom Philly. it was just tom and i it was long before rick Who or mike else the day. That. That yeah they, quick, they, huh? they had to have, they had to have an offering so they had two truck mounts that were only five horsepower apart so it didn't make much sense but they were building the line they had you know the 570 in line and in fact the, the way i got hired by legend brands was george wanted a high pressure unit uh, truck mount for the master's touch because he had originally started out with power clean. Remember the power clean units, uh, Jim Nape sure. out of Chicago. Yeah. Sure. So, so we, we had that unit under the uh, master's touch, but then he started to go out of business, which he went out of business. I, I hear he's back in, but so we need a new truck mount. So I started looking at blue line and then found Sapphire and I go, Hey, this Sapphire is different. I mean, they had their, you know, their new diverter, their double pass heat exchanger, their coil heat exchanger. So this is something really cool. And oh, by the way, Mike Roden, you know, from ProChem is the lead designer. George and I knew Mike through TurboForce. So we had immediate connection. And then I helped them with the specs and testing on building the 2500 HS, which was their 
their hard surface unit for Sapphire. Uh, you know, it, the guys who wanted hard surface units gravitated towards it, and Master Stutch ended up using it in their uh, business opportunity, which then, you know, got me working closely with Mike Roden and, and Bill Bruders, and then they just asked me if I wanted to go to work for them because of my mechanical background and hard surface. And so I worked for Legend Brands for nine years with Rick Aranda. Everybody knows Rick. And Mike mm -hmm. Ellison, we had a tight team, and Tom Fielding and, um, for nine years. And then I was their hard surface instructor going to all the distributors teaching hard surface two-day classes on, on basic, you know, tile and grout and, you know, the basics. Uh, and, you know, dealing a little bit with stone, but they didn't have any stone products or, you know, anything to sell there. So I did. So after nine years, I left but I'd been developing my stone restoration side of my knowledge. And then I just gravitated towards offering those same classes to the distributors I used to teach at with legend brands. So I would go up and do uh, natural stone classes for Hugh Sinclair up in Toronto and CRS, New England and Boston, Jay Kennedy's place and a few others. And I'll be doing some more here uh, fairly soon. I'm, I'm working. I, I can't really tell you what it is yet because it hasn't come to fruition, but, it looks like I'll be doing a lot of training here in the near future through a network uh, and probably starting down there in Florida and going through South yeah. and the East and that. If I had a multi-truck company and was just not really doing much of anything with tile and stone, uh, I would definitely bring you in. What, what would it cost you? What would it cost me to bring you in for a two day? Well, it's, uh, in the shop? it's, it's a thousand a day plus expenses. That's oh, a bargain. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the other instructors are more, but not everybody knows who I am. So I kind of got to prove myself. But what we do in our classes is since I'm a, a business owner, Advantage Plus Carbon Stone Care, free plug, uh, is I teach them what I do every day, day in, day out. Yeah. And so we actually go through the basics, but then we get into some serious hands on where we'll grind the floor, remove lippage. Um, or, you know, learn how to deal with lippage and, and hone and polish and do grout repair, you know, super grout additive, um, you know, 10X uh, crack repair. We just did a, a complete restoration on a floor. We actually, um, I'll, it was on the stone restoration page. I'll put it on my website, but where we had to, there was 25 loose tiles within the floor that, that they were flexing. They're actually, you know, the tile was doing this. And we had yeah, to drill and fill, yeah, we drilled and filled those with a, a flowing epoxy, weighted them down, and it's a quick set. And then 45 minutes later, we were grinding that floor flat and brought it up to a high reflectivity. So we can go on a wide range. I do, I do uh, granite uh, restoration now, not just polishing, but scratch removal and, and resetting seams. So there's a lot that I now teach and do that I wasn't doing before. You know, I did once, um... You know uh, Tom and Jordan King up in Indianapolis? You no, I, I can't say I do. Well, they they run, I don't know, like a four or five truck company with a rug shop. They also sell okay. furniture and rugs, but they were barely scratching the surface on tile and stone, and I've, I've been friends with them, their family there for quite some time. So they they flew me out there, and they were able to arrange, they do a lot of realtor work, but they found a, a big empty house, Mm -hmm. that they could wait on till I got there. And I, you know, I gave them a long list of supplies. They didn't have much of anything other than maybe a turbo. Right. And we went in there with all our crew and just spent the whole day in there, you know, fixing grout, recocking, granite polishing, all sorts of stuff. But that's, that's something you might want to think about. You know, that's the real way, world, yeah. kind of like what we do with the Ron yeah. McDonald house. And clean real yeah. stuff, not just nine foot pallets. Well, there was, yeah. uh, there was, um, I think it was Modern Stone. I don't think they have it anymore. They had uh, what they called the Stone House training. Modern Stone's actually out of uh, Chandler, Arizona. This was years ago. And anyway, yeah. I went over there, checked it out. Yeah, they had a whole house where they had, you know, different types of stone in each uh, room in the home and, you know, granite countertops and all that. So, um, like you know, that you, you'd love to be able to set something. I mean, that's expensive because then you have, you know, property you have to pay for and everything else. I mean, generally, yeah. when I go into a distributor, they either have stone on the floor or they'll build a four by four, you know, stone floor on a, on a crate and we'll 
we'll do the floor, but it'll be in a smaller section. And then we'll set up right. some granite on a table and we'll scratch the granite and learn how to take scratches out. And that's more on the advanced side. Some guys don't gravitate towards that. They feel more comfortable in, in yeah, cleaning and sealing and maybe using a dip pad, you know, for and some light polishing, maybe getting into resins. But I'm, I'm starting to tailor my classes to where we have uh, kind of the beginning intermediate class, which is two days where wow. you're going to learn, you know, what is stone, w what chemicals to use, what not to use, how to test it, the physical properties of the stone and do your basic polishing. And then the second day, if, you know, they can, they can stay for one, pay for one or pay for two. And the second day actually get into uh, using resins to hone floors and grind floors and remove lippage and create that ultra high polish that some customers are willing to pay, you know, four to five dollars a square foot for mm -hmm. along with so, the granite yeah yeah our, you know our focus isn't too much on stone right now but you and i were talking yesterday about stone pros class and their uh classroom yeah which is much like what you were describing where you're, you're going to a warehouse that's full of right you know basically pallet size samples of every kind of stone you, you know you can imagine that you get to play with with you know a variety of polishing materials and machines mm -hmm. And also some countertop, countertop stuff, but um, nobody really offers a, a grout cleaning or repair school. And I had a you know a good long conversation going. I think it was on Facebook about whether or not the IICRC needs to teach that. And, mm -hmm. uh, most people think they do. You know, it's yeah, uh, yeah. Especially the no, repair it's... part. And that's yeah. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you there. I was going to say. Um... Absolutely. I mean, that's a, every floor that we do has some type of need for grout repair. Every floor. Uh, yeah. Well, I should take that back. I mean, if we're doing a brand new installation, they just want us to clean and seal, get all the grouties off. Yeah. But 90% of them, you, you, there's going to be some missing grout, some, some air pockets, um, you know, like say loose tiles or cracked. But just getting to the grout portion of it. When we go in, the first thing I do after I go into the customer's home is I try to look for additional services to offer them, obviously. I mean, it's sure. the first rule of, you know, upselling, right? Look for other opportunities. And so I'll, I'll say, you mind if I go in there and look at your shower and your master? And if it's in a lot of the homes we go into, a walk-in shower with a stone and you look at the curb and the curb where it meets the wall, that uh, change of plane there, you're always going to have some kind of cracks or mold growing or something where the water's yeah. getting in there yeah. and yeah. it's going to, going to do serious damage and maybe cause mold migration and it's immediate. You need to take care of this. And especially when you educate them and you tell them I can put in a permanent epoxy grout that you're not going to have to ever worry about again. And we, you know, on an average walk in, uh, we'll get 450 bucks to cut all the grout out and put SGA in. And that's not even going yeah. up the walls. That's just doing the curb and maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I, I won't yeah. show up sight unseen on a tile job, and my guys won't do it either. You know, we because, like you said, ninety percent mm -hmm. of tile jobs are going to need something in some shape or fashion that you don't have on the truck. Some kind right. of grout, some kind of sealer, epoxies, silicones, and, and you know, you can't carry all that stuff. Even in our our Aerotech, which is mm -hmm. you know as big as most people's garages. Right. You, you can't carry all those different things and you want to come prepared. And most people, they think it's like carpet, you know, you can just move the couch out, clean the top, put it back. Mm -hmm. They don't realize all these steps and ceiling and the, there's a right. lot of prep work. Well, and um, here's, go ahead. Yeah. Finish. I got, I, I want well, to tell you something about the shower. And yeah. You'll lose jobs sometimes because people think it is a, you know, like carpet and you're in and out. Yeah. And once you tell yeah. them, you know, you're having all these issues and you, when you go out with a, a first time home buyer and they're just moving in or they moved in last week and they know it needs it and you come in and a guy like you and myself, but we can point out all those flaws. It's easy right. to overwhelm them. You know, yeah. You got to read, scenes. you got to read your customer. You definitely have to read your customer. Um, yeah. We service a lot of high end homes. And so we're not dealing with a first time home buyer. I get where you're going with that. You know, I mean, I'll read the customer and I'll say, you know, in, in in if I if I think it's getting to that point, I'll back off. I won't. I don't want to seem like a used car salesman. I'm just trying to help them and educate them and understand what they're up against, so that they're informed enough to make a a quality decision on what to do. 
Um, nice. It's just like with guys might go in to a shower and think that they can put that sanded silicone caulk in there, and that's not a proper repair for that. Um, well, it looks great until they use the shower too. Yeah, exactly. You know, it, 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 it'll shrink. Um, you know, some of it's just like using a polyester in a shower. It, it absorbs water. You're going to get problems there. So when we educate them on, on the quality of the service that we render and why we use what we use, and then, of course, I have pictures to show them of previous jobs already queued up on my phone. Um, it's a pretty easy sale, especially in the shower when you start talking about um, water migration and what that does as far as possibility of mold and then structural failure or damage. Because once that gets to that backer board and it starts to swell, you'll get you know, the hydrostatic pressure, too, that'll build up and you'll have tiles come loose. But, you know, typically if we're if we're just doing some basic grout repair, which is, you know, three, four dollars a linear foot to remove and put that in there. I will use the sanded silicon grout repair um, in the main floor, not, not anywhere where there's moisture, but in a main floor area. Uh, we use Spectrum, which we get from uh, um, Big D's in Phoenix, and we just switched over that from Bosch stick. We were using Bosch stick from, um, from floor to core, and then we went to Spectrum, and we liked the varying colors, and uh, it, it seemed to harden up better than the the Bosch stick. So I know you you did a lot of you were carrying tubes of silicon crowd on your truck for a long time and I think you're you're still yeah, doing that, right? Just, but Yeah, we would, you know, carry some of the basic colors, but Yeah. Those things Luxury only live little. in the truck for maybe two or three months and then they yeah. harden up. Yeah, we store them inside when we're not we we take we take a minute yeah, out of the truck. We have to in Phoenix. It's, you know, 190 degrees in the summer. So <laughs> we were doing the uh, Reno Ronald McDonald house last month and I was going to recock their, their counter, the backsplash. And I went and bought a fresh tube of white at our local hardware store and didn't think anything of it. And we get to the job. I start pushing the schnozzle and wadding up. And, oh crap. Yeah. I'm poking the yeah. hole. Nothing. Yeah. I noticed the date, 2012. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you try to cut the tube open with your utility knife and dig it out with your fingers. Yeah. yeah. So yeah make sure you're buying you know, any of those products. And yeah. You know what I've been wanting to try? I just haven't found the right situation yet. But um, this company that sells the RTV silicone, have you seen that? Yeah, that's, we yeah, used to use we use that in automotive, like when I was a diesel mechanic. Well, yeah, that's what you yeah. you seal up your your transmission and oil yeah, cans. Exactly. With, but there's a company yeah. now making that that ultra high heat, ultra durable RTV, but in all the all the grout colors, all the different companies and colors. Cool, and they you do can buy it online and... one tube at a time. Oh, well, I'll check into that. I did. That's good info. Yeah, let me, let me see yeah, if I can pull learning. that while we're talking because somebody turned that on to me on Mikey's board. Right. Um. They had tried the SGA, and you know, while the sometimes the SGA works so good, sometimes you use it where you probably don't need it, and it's kind of slow. You know, it's a three part mixture, and you got to shove it into a big old right. horse syringe, right. and it's it's time consuming. You got to charge a lot for it. That's why I don't uh, do it on may on, on minor repairs on flooring. I'll use the sanded silicon grout repair, but where it has to be used, and it's for structural integrity, like showers, you go to the SGA. It's the only thing you use. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Color Right Incorporated. Let me see if that's them. Yeah, you'll recognize. You have to do post that on. Uh, uh, yeah, post that. I'll go check that out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's cool because I've seen custom colored silicones before, but you always had to order a dozen. You know, what yeah. are you going to do with a, a mm -hmm. dozen of? Uh, stone or whatever you know it's never going to line up it's all going to go bad on you but anyhow this is a, a good option to, to keep in mind where you have you know when you're doing grout repair there's certain times that you're going to fill a gap that no matter what you do is always going to flex and upstairs cheapo yep. fiberglass yep, right. bathtub you well, know you unless you get it in between the subfloors there mm -hmm. and firm it up it's it's going to fail so so you gotta you gotta plan for that expansion yeah you, you, uh, you took the words the tub you took the words right out of my mouth. We, in fact, when you have um, some type of a foundational issue on a main floor, you'll always know because it'll crack from wall to wall usually, or it'll trace mm -hmm. out the grout lines that that is a, you know, substrate failure 
somewhere in the foundation, maybe on a crack joint, control joint or something. And then you never want to just regrout that again with standard grout because it's, it's not going to flex, like it's you said, and again. crack again. So yeah. that's, where you, that's where those products really came into prominence is that they were used for those types of areas or second floor where you have a lot of deflection in the floor where yeah. you, you're going to need that. Absolutely. So this RTV, though, sounds interesting. I'd like to uh, do some yeah. testing on that. File centers, yeah, they're always going to just throw grout from the, uh, the tub the tub, the wall joint, yeah, and they cram it in a little, you know, one sixteenth or one eighth line. Looks great until the first time, you know, the the two hundred pound person takes a bath mm -hmm. in there, and then it all pops out. Now you get to go dig it out. But isn't it the code in some states, particularly in uh, earthquake prone states, that you leave a quarter inch gap and you do put something flexible in that area? <laughs> Well, I, I don't live in an earthquake state like you used to, so we don't we don't deal with that much in, in the desert. But um, I would imagine I, I can't tell you for sure what that standard is. I haven't looked at that, you know, aspect of it. Um, I, you know, I know that uh, like in some stone applications where they want a butt joint type, uh, almost zero grout that you have to yeah. make up for that expansion around your perimeter. So. If you looked up, if you pulled the baseboard off, you would see that, you know, eighth of an inch, half inch, um, where the baseboard's going to cover it up. But that will be the expansion area to allow the floor to move so that if you do have butt joint installation, it doesn't heave the tiles in the center. Because if it's all the way up against the walls underneath the baseboard, you've got no room for expansion and you'll get heaving in your, in your joints. And, you know, wouldn't matter what you put in there, you get, it's going to peak the tile. We just got through that situation and that one floor that we had to re-glue and that's why it did that because there was no room for expansion and when you know stone is a organic material it's going to move you know it's depending on the moisture you know humidity time of year it's going to move it's just like wood well not just like but you follow me it does expand and contract yeah, and, and so how your so, is very similar sanding yeah yeah um, well that's true that's true very true yeah. so so as far as, you know, what standards or what, I just know that if you, if you look at a floor and you have major grout failure and it's throughout, it's probably a substrate issue. Something's going on there. Or, I mean, because typically if you, you know, do it, what I call that, you know, the five test, you know, the scratch grape acid test, absorption and grout strength, you know, and, and testing for sealers and that, if you poke that grout and it's a cement based grout, you know, it should be, almost be as hard as concrete. I mean, it's a Portland cement, right? So you shouldn't be able to stick your knife into the ground and let go and it stands straight up and down. If that happens, then you, that's more of a improper installation. They may have overhydrated the, you know, the grout mixture, made it too loose and it didn't cure properly. So if you, if you suspect you know, some type of grout issues, you should definitely be testing it for strength because a lot of times what we found is if we don't turn our turbo down to 800 PSI and advise the customer by showing them you got some weak grout oh, here. Yeah, absolutely. And then you're to blame. So you got to manage that up front with the customer and say, hey, look, let me show you. Here's your grout. Hey, look how weak it is. Okay. Uh, we are advising you right now that there are conditions within this floor that are pre existing that could end up causing issues during the cleaning process. Do you want us to continue? Yes. Okay. Sign here. And then we turn our pressure down and then typically it's been good. I mean, there have been jobs where we've turned down because it's just so bad yeah. that we don't want anything to do with that. But that's, the, that's rare. One of the first things I did when I got, when I got the turbo hybrid early 2000s. Um, actually, it might have been 2004 or so. When I got the Vortex. I went to one of the local tile stores and offered to clean their showroom for free and they had them on the showrooms you know where every 50 feet was a different tile different ground right, you right. Know, just to show off what they could do mm -hmm. and they did a horrible job you know whoever put it in one of their tile setters you know mm -hmm. grout was just all powdery and but <laughs> you know of course i went in there with a vortex at 1200 psi <laughs> and you know 800 degrees and yeah let me show I you what i can do this is of that grout <laughs> left <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> this is this is a, they never got any uh, referrals out of them. <laughs> right, I was going to say, this is how we remove grout. Yeah, that, that's where you would have shifted that conversation to. Yeah. Uh, good, good yeah, move on your... Early on, you would, you would hear a lot of tile setters, you know, yeah. telling people, oh, man, don't have one of them carpet cleaner guys come in. They'll blow right. out all the grout. 
Oh, that was well, good. You know, usually those were tile players didn't know what they're doing. Yeah, Setting good move on your part though, going to the uh, tile distributor to clean the showroom. Uh, we did that locally here at a high-end stone um, company, and I'm telling you, this that's exactly how we got over a hundred thousand dollars worth of work in the last year and a half was just by doing their yeah. showroom. And now oh, we're yeah. their, now we're their preferred vendor. We, in fact, every time we go in there. There's somebody there, and they go, oh, well, here they are right now. They're handing our card to the customer to have us come and clean and seal their new installation. So that's I've been FYI, trying to get through. We have one big tile store in town, and I've, I've offered them a number of times, and I'm always in there buying grout, you know, small bags, silicone, and mm -hmm. you got a travertine showroom. looks like crap. And at one point, I thought they were going to have me do it. And I said, oh, I'll have my daughter call and set it up. She calls to get somebody else on the phone. They go, oh, no, we already have somebody that does this. And just hung right. up on her. Right. They didn't want to push it. They want to be a pain in the butt. I've done yeah. some live videos in their showroom. Mm -hmm. um, they know by the questions I ask that, you know, I know what I'm doing. But, you know, the, the number one tile cleaner in this town is the sister of the biggest tile contractor. And this, you know, this guy, he probably does 80% of the tile in this town. Mm -hmm. Huge, huge. Mm -hmm. And he sets up his sister to go back out in a year and clean it and, and seal it yep. right away, too. He yep. doesn't do the right. sealing. But she's she's scrubbing with hand brushes and rinsing with a mop and maybe a uh, shop back. Okay. Sorry about that. We're back. All right. So, Brian, I think we've established that you know what you're talking about. We've gone over your right. history and talk shop a little bit. Yep. Let, me, let me pick your brain on a couple of hot topics, and then we're going to okay. talk about – what we're going to do and um yep and, let's and, do uh, that Phoenix. i'm bringing okay. the show to you for once so that's pretty cool well that was a great uh, one last time you had it there at the swirl hotel it was awesome yeah and well, let me get to that so let, let's pick these three hot topics color okay. seal yep well i mean there's plus and minuses to color seal if you ask me i mean that that's almost like asking you know GLM versus hot water extraction. <laughs> we go well, you, got, you got a guy in your town. Yeah, I know. Uh, Mark, Markovitz, Mark Markovitz that right. almost refuses the cup to clear seal. Color seals right. everything. And that's okay. that's a that's a that's a two hour conversation itself. Yeah. You got franchises, you know, Coit, Stanley Steamer, they've all gone yep. through it. Typically so, when somebody finds out about it, that you know, maybe they're not on the internet, they don't have other, you know, experience color seal right. uh, veterans talk about it's it sounds almost too good to be true right well it's very okay. easy to sell the customers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's it, just uh, again it's like you're never gonna have to clean your ground again we're gonna plastic yeah. coat it and everything's just gonna wipe no. right off okay all right let's start from because that is a lengthy conversation Keep most of the most of the guys who have cleaned tile and grout before and have run into color seal that was previously installed incorrectly realize how big a pain in the ass it's going to be because if they did not originally install it properly by doing an acid wash first which opens up the porosity of the grout it's just like when you do an epoxy uh, garage floor the first thing you do is acid wash the concrete why so that the epoxy will bond better to the actual substrate the, the concrete and then you can do all your fancy stuff on top of that if you're not doing the color seal properly it's a big problem for the next guy who has to come in and clean it and notice i said properly so i mean we came into a home that had been color sealed all 1400 square feet she had just bought the house she was renovating the house as soon as we identified the color seal we went through every area of the home pointing out where it had failed. We did some test cleaning. Failed. I said, you know, you either, we either have to color seal over this and you still have, because we have failed previous installation, the possibility of getting more failure later, or we strip all this out. Well, believe it or not, she paid us three bucks a square foot to strip, linear foot to strip all that out. And I never want to have to do it again because it was with wire brushes and solvents and it was a mess two and three or four times yeah. it was horrible so here's the thing about it if you're going to do color seal make sure you do it right you acid clean first neutralize 
dry it out and then color seal and put it on sufficiently to where you really get a good bond. A lot of the stone guys do, that's all they do because they really aren't, the guys that are truly on the stone restoration side, they don't own truck mounts. They have wet backs and they have floor machines and they rinse and extract with a wet bag. So what a lot of times what they do and they, they know how to do it right, but they do, uh, and usually with stone, you're going to have 16th of an inch or less unsanded grout on stone, and they do their color sealing um, as the way of refreshing the appearance of the grout to match the polish that they just put in. And they use, there's products out there like um, Color Clad, which is a really good product, but you, you kind of have to know how to use it because there's mixing charts and, you know, but it's a really good product and it'll bond to epoxy and it'll bond to a lot of other uh, types of uh, floors. I mean, you could color seal an epoxy grouted floor if you wanted to. Uh, but my big thing is we only offer it if we have to where grout replacement doesn't make sense. And we'll, we'll make sure they understand how we're going to do it, how we're going to apply it. And we make sure we get paid good money for it. So we don't do it for less than a buck 50 to two on linear foot. It's just, you know, I would rather clean and acid wash or have maybe have some repairs done replacement than color sealing if that's the case. Because if a floor is properly maintained and clean and then sealed, the only time you really color seal is when you can't get the consistent color within that or they want to change the color. That and color correction, where, yeah. you know, tile mm -hmm. crack, grout line fails, subfloor causes, it, you know, a big long crack along the road. Well, and you can get, you can get UV yeah, fading and, and with the yeah. Color. yeah, you get UV fading and, you know, kitchens where there's a lot of light coming in. So there are, so the, the answer is yes and no to, to, to color ceiling. It just depends on the application, depends on what you're getting into. I don't, I, I don't want to have a tool that should be used. Yeah, it, 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 it's just, it's an yeah. option, but it's not something I like to offer. And other guys may say that's the way they want to do all their floors and good for them, go for it. But I'm still about cleaning and sealing with a, clear penetrating grout sealer yeah okay we're on the same page there and then yep. you you mentioned acid cleaning and i know uh you know a lot of the franchise don't let their guys use acid uh many cleaners are just frightened to death of it because all the horror stories mm -hmm. most cleaners don't charge enough to mask you right. know, the appliances in the kitchen or mm -hmm. you know don't look at baseboards or whatnot and, and it is dangerous but if you know what you're doing with it, it I mean, it's a must have. If you're a tile cleaner, you got to have Absolutely. an acid on the truck, mm -hmm. preferably pro chems, uh, what they call restoration acid. There's nothing else like it on the market. Yeah. Either. It's a, that's a phosphoric base. Most of the phosphoric base acids work better. We use one, uh, by stone pro called quick clean. That's worked exceptionally well too for us. But the key is to know when to use it. We it's, I'd look at it like this. I, when I teach it, Okay, let's go to carpet. Is your defense spotter your general pre-spray? No. You use that defense spotter when you need it, correct? For that spot. Yeah. That's yeah. the way you should look at an acid cleaner for grout. It's a spotter for grout. You use it only when you need to and only after mm -hmm. you've tried an alkaline and it didn't get the color even in the grout or there's an issue there that you need to try to even out that grout line. And that's when you use the acid only followed always by a neutralizing rinse with a, with an alkalinity on the opposite it. side. Yeah. Spotter for grout. I always say, I always, you know, I, I've sat through your classes on them many times, presentations. Mm -hmm. I always learned something new, whether it's just a tagline or something, but spotter for grout is perfect. There you, you go. Know, what an acid does, if you're not aware, is it basically removes a very fine layer of grout. It's dissolving the mm -hmm. calcium-based grout. Hopefully, exposing clean grout underneath right if it's a shallow stain but you know if it's right. a heavy use area and the grout was never sealed then that coffee dog urine red mm -hmm. whatever red wine is going to saturate through the whole depth of the grout mass is not going to do a thing and that's but, where color sealing um, comes in and that's yeah, where color it. sealing comes in right exactly right you cover it or you dig it out that small area and you replace yep. it if you you know identify what type of grout it is yep but you know what what, what I and my guys do, rather than always having a bottle of acid ready, is we just carry around one of those little wire toothbrushes. 
Mm -hmm. so when you're cleaning ground, you got it wet, and you got a little yeah. stain there in front of the toilet or right in the middle of the room on a white mm -hmm. tile that shows up like a sore thumb. Those wire brushes, they're doing the same thing. They remove a layer of grout, too. Yeah, as long as you're careful with those, because what they will do also is, on, I've noticed on some porcelain tiles, is they'll leave a black line on the edge of the of the tile on the radius. Yeah, they so you gotta be careful. It. Yeah, yeah. They, they can't yeah. do that. And you don't um, use the acid with that. Much, and if you are using the acid, don't use the the furious metal steel brush because you're creating the acid will attack the the furious metal in the brush and cro and actually cause corrosion, which will leave that Dark. black even better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So use the nylon the nylon brushes <laughs> with the acid. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, so the third thing is kind of a, I mean, touch on all this. It, it's, it's equipment being prepared to do virtually yeah. everything and coming to terms with, you got to be able to do counters and, and yep. more regretfully, you got to do showers. If you're going to take on big tile projects and not just do the entry and maybe a little mm -hmm. kitchen and bath here and there. If you want yep. the whole house projects, which, you know, include carpet and furniture, too. That's right. You've got we to do. clean all the hard surfaces, and you got to be prepared. you got to have all the tools. And yep. you see the average carpet cleaning truck being set up, you know, with the truck mount, the reel, the water tank, and, yep. you know, the three-tiered shelf, and that's it. You're like, mm -hmm. Dude, where are you going to put all the tools? I mean, it's a – it's we well that's there. it's a struggle i mean I, what we need we need a box truck is what we need because we do stone too but the name of our company yeah. is advantage plus carpet and stone care so absolutely we do carpet we'll do their upholstery we'll do their tile and grout we'll do their stone we'll do their granite countertops their showers i don't want to leave any part of that house for some other company to come in and take my business Especially you in know? Phoenix, where you have so much competition, yeah, and there's more than likely mm -hmm. someone else that does it all. And if you That's leave right. one little eye out, oh, I don't do baseboards, man. <laughs> right. Guess nope. what? The next guy's going to do all of it. So yeah, you got to have a truck that you can fit all that stuff in, or be real mindful and look at every job every day and scrutinize, you know, and then throw in your big, you know, three foot Tupperware totes with all those little bits and yep. pieces and I, i've done videos on it I, i've listed mm -hmm. on my keyboard 100 times but if you want to work on that list get a hold of me but it, it's a long list of tools that you need and you're yep. not going to throw it in your your, your three three tiered shelf and your normal carpet cleaning band setup no no nope. if you're if you're getting started in this in this industry uh you know how carpet is shrinking and hard surface yep. is taking over and Plan your and, truck layout accordingly. And, and what's the rule in doing showers, Mike? It always takes you two to three times longer than you think it's going to take you. you so, yeah, <laughs> charge you better charge accordingly. That's right. They're the uh, worst. I don't. I don't enjoy doing showers, but we do them all the time. The problem is, is people they'll get their floor done, but they'll wait years and years and years to do their shower until the funk yeah. has gotten so bad in there. You know that it's like what I call dinosaur poop, man. It's just stuck, and Gunk. that's where you really got to. The, the area yeah. you live in, the closer to the coast, yep. or the swamp in the south, the worse it's going to be because showers never dry out. If you have a husband right. and wife, right. take their, you know, their two individual showers in the morning, it's still going to be wet at, at four in the morning before they get back in. Right. Um, luckily or not, luckily here in Nevada, in the, you know, in the high desert. Yeah, I, I can leave a quarter inch of water in my shower. I'll be gone in, in 15 minutes. It just dries yeah, out. Yeah, I, I just, same way. I don't see cold in showers. Either. I don't have to run my exhaust fan. We, you know, we have no humidity, and, and our average temperature is 90 degrees in Phoenix. Yeah. You know, so, but the point is, too, is that for those guys who are thinking about getting into doing that special, remember, it's specialty work, so charge accordingly and understand it took, 50, you know, maybe five years to get there. It's not all coming off in one cleaning. We typically have to clean a shower two and three times in certain areas, especially where it builds up due to the splash from the water and accumulates where you get that, especially in Phoenix where we have super hard water. So just know that you guys that are going to do that. Um, I don't, a typical, a typical ticket for a shower is 600 bucks and could go as high as 1200 if it's stone. If it takes me a day and a, if it takes a day and a half to do it, and our minimum is a thousand a day, 
if I got to be there yeah. all day doing that shower, it's a thousand bucks. You got to know your out. You got to know your hourly, and you got to know your daily rate. And it's, if you get a call, and that's all they're asking about a shower, you know, tell them that you know the minimum is whatever you know going to be three hundred, and that's a shower that you you almost don't even need to go into. That's just sticking your hydrofors gun in there. Right. That's a that's a, so that's a tub surround. That's a tub surround. I'm yeah. talking about walk-ins where I'm doing the pan. Walk in, and I'm doing hands and yeah. knees. You got right. a mask up. You start. Yeah. You know, one of the first things you do in the shower is take a razor blade and. and and scrape or cut all the soap scum off so you don't have to waste right. chemistry and time because it's right. quicker to razor blade them. And if you don't cover up and you inhale some of that, you're going to be feeling oh, yeah. it for days. It's horrible I stuff. Know. Yeah, you don't uh, know what you're inhaling. come off with that. And, you know, when they got a, a lumpy, contoured, textured uh, uh, ceramic or porcelain, mm -hmm. there goes, you know, now you're not razor blading. If they got stone yeah. or, you know, rough stone, flagstone, slate, yeah. something like that. Right. The ones I, I hate are the the ones that I hate are the river the pebble stones on the floor of the pan. Floor, oh, those are yeah. the worst. Yeah. Yeah. So anyhow, yeah, yeah sure. you, you got to learn the shower biz. It's a slow learn because you're not going to be doing them every day. Um, I've done a number of videos on them, and just type go on the Mikey's board and type in shower stall, and, and there's days of reading on it. But uh, but granite countertops, you 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 had started to say something about you know the countertops. You should oh, at yeah, least. Yeah, you got to do counters too. A lot of at guys least don't want to do it. They don't want to buy be, the extra tools. Right, but at least be doing the cleaning, conditioning, uh, and you know maybe a crystallizer. Right, I mean, so a Makita, ninety-two thirty-seven C adjustable, you know, speed trigger set, um, and a standard L-shaped kitchen with like a, a, a four or five by thirteen island. And then maybe 10 feet of uh, 10 by two and a half of granite on one side of the uh, stove and then a short one on the other side going to the fridge, 450 bucks all day long. And it takes me about two and a half hours. That's our ticket. That yeah, to do yeah. an L shape with it with an island. And we get it all the time when we're in in these homes because I do a test. Paul. I did one the other day where the I told the lady. I said, you'd be surprised what I can make this look like. And she said, well, that's what the last guy said. I said, well, I'm not the last guy. And we do a little, few extra steps. And I do like a six step. I'll, I'll scrape it with a razor blade to get any extra re resin off. I'll, I'll stone scrub it. I'll neutral clean it. I'll seal it. I'll uh, paste polish and then do a crystallizer. And when we got done, when we got done with that. Say before paste polish, steal it. Steel wool? So, oh, seal it. Seal it. Sorry. Seal. Penetrating sealer. Right. Seal it and then polish it because you want to put the sealer in before you polish. And then then the last step is a crystallizer. And when we did that, I'll post some on my Facebook page. It looked like a mirror. She was blown away. She said, wow, you really did it better than the last guy. I said, I'm not the last guy, but I'll be the last guy you'll need for your countertops. <laughs> yep. That's pretty good. Absolutely. You got it. So, so Brian, we'll do a final um, anyway. Yep. You're, I mean, you're, I, I can't think of a more competitive market for hard surface in Phoenix because of the heat. You know, people yeah. want nice, cool floors. Yeah. Uh, you've traveled around the country. I, I would think, you know, maybe, uh, you know, parts of Florida are, are second. Yeah. But, uh, you know, you bought that, you bought into that business, what, two, three years ago now? Two and a half. Yep. Yeah. I left uh, Legend Brands in. 2006 late 16 yeah from, from what i've gathered i mean i know it was a struggle at first because you're primarily a carpet cleaning company and you kind of yes. joined up got became a partner to take over the hard hard surface so what start. have you been able to accomplish in those those three so it, it's interesting that you bring because absolutely just because you know something doesn't mean you're going to be a success at it when you go out on your own i mean this this is but what a I can't think of a more rewarding aspect of being an entrepreneur than seeing the business start to grow. So, yeah, he, my business partner, 30 years, uh, you know, property management, get ready apartments, you know, that whole, you know, 50 bucks an apartment. And I got in there and I said, Larry, this ain't going to work. This ain't going to cut. We got our tickets got to get up there. Our average ticket with stone is, you know, 25 to five grand and, you know, we got a bid in right now 
for a commercial building downtown Phoenix at 30 grand. We'll, we'll know in a couple of days if we got that. It's nine floors of Terrazzo. With, uh, it's a historic building. with, with um, And we've got to polish it. We've got to strip and polish it. Terrazzo, no more floor finish on the Terrazzo, no more floor finish on the marble serpentine mix down uh, We have, well, there's four of us total. So my point is, is that we had to break into, because the one drawback with Stone is, it does take longer to get the type of clientele that can afford you. I say it to my business partner all the time. There's certain people that shouldn't have Stone because they can't afford it. They don't understand. It takes, takes 1000 to 1500 bucks a year just to maintain it. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. So, so we're finally, we, we did what you, you know, you talked about. We went into the tile store. Fortunately, we found a really high end tile distributor, polished his showroom floor. He was so impressed that he allowed us to put our business cards up there. We've gotten over a hundred grand worth of work out of him. And we got into the neighborhoods that he sells mm -hmm. into that are multi-million dollar homes up on the mountain. You know, or near you know, the Paradise the, tile Center, center. The, the company giving out your info. Like, here's the guy you're the gonna designer, call. The designer, the when designer. when they come in, the designer ends her conversation. And I've seen her do it. We've walked right in, and last time we were there, handing our card to the customer, saying, "You got to use these guys." In fact, it's so funny is that I feel kind of you know humbled by it. But she's that when we go to the customer's home, they go, "Oh yeah, they said that you were the stone doctor," and I'm like. Um, no, there's a company now. I won't say crowd fire, but I said, no, we, we just know what we're doing. I mean, we're, you know, we're very proficient. We want to prove our experience to you and all that. But uh, when you get the right type of referrals and you get people talking about your company, that's when things start to move forward in a, in a good way. And that's what we've been doing is getting into the right homes, getting in with the right general contractors. We have several general contractors uh, a couple of maintenance companies. We just got on with one that has is in multiple states. Now that one we're going to have to pay a slight percentage on because we're going in under his auspices, and so we bill him. He bills the company, but he's coming. That's where we got this large thirty thousand dollar bid was through his company. So I'll be happy to pay him two grand for a thirty thousand dollar job all day long. So, you know, we're working at it in several different ways. And but yet it's starting to to grow and we're getting in, like I said, into the neighborhoods where cost is not the, the issue. The issue is, can you do the work? Can you repair this floor and make it look as good as new? So that's that's our our clientele base. What we're trying to get into, you know, if you want to put a demographics to it or a number to it would be the, you know, 750 to. $5 million homes, you know what I mean? Yeah. Those that have floors that can afford it. You know, you can run a Facebook ad for tile and grout cleaning or stone, <laughs> and then, you know, they got 800 square feet yeah. of travertine, and they don't realize it's a dollar to start, and then that's just to start, yeah. and it can go up from there. Yeah. And they go, oh, okay, wow, so I thought it was like 30 cents. <laughs> 30 cents a square. You mean you can't do it for 30 cents? Well, somebody might. Well, I mean, there's yeah, plenty of tile pimps out there. Yeah. Most of your Phoenix yes. market is doing it for 30 cents. Yeah, I know. That's the shame. Splitting it, cleaning it yeah. faster than Berber carpet. Yeah, there's tile but, pimps out there. That's for sure. I call them the tile pimps. Lots of, yeah, especially in your area. Uh, I got a long list here. So what I want to do with you in, in Phoenix, mm -hmm. or Scottsdale, I should say, is on um, – on Tuesday, the day before the Ron McDonald House, uh, Sager and Meg are going to do a kind of a walking tour of all three houses. Okay. I'm going to be up at the, you know, on that Legends tour, but those guys have agreed to do it. And right. anybody who comes in early, uh, I, I highly recommend it because you get to see all three houses. Is, uh, yeah, we... you know, people that are attending the event, they're going to be at one house all day for the most part. Well, that's what we and did last time you were here. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what we did last night, and it made it, it made good sense because we got to talk about the floor, and and get a good game plan, and diagnose it, and understand the proper procedures based upon you know soil load materials, and 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 it's a good yeah. learning experience actually. Yeah. Well, that's what I want you to do is take that tour and go through right. there with your eagle eye and see where you're going to be needed the most. Right. And it might sure. be where you go spend you know a couple hours at each house. Yep. And, you know, we're going to have, you know, more than likely enough 
new cleaners that we might be able to form you a team, a helpful team that follows you from house to house. Let's say you okay. go do some granite work at one of them and the grout repair at another and some whatever, some extensive cleaning at another one. Right. Or maybe where you find so much wrong with one house, you decide to park it there all day. But I'm going to leave that up to you. Um, there is a chance I might be in Phoenix before then. Okay. In which case, we could sort of do that then, too, if I, if I have the time. But I want to kind of leave it up to you. And then also on um, on Friday, the cleaning's on Wednesday, and then we're going to have a real hands on -y event on Friday morning. Where mm -hmm. we clean all the surfaces at that hotel, the lobby, a lot of wood, sizal rugs. Yeah, I remember um, it. A good, mm -hmm. good amount of wall to wall carpet. But uh, there's unfortunately, there's really no tile no. to do there. So that's where I'm going to have you set up and, you know, like we talked about yesterday, do some mock, right. mock uh, tub to wall enclosures, uh, counter to backsplash, and do some let SGA. people try. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. the SGA, super grout additive, and. Mm -hmm talking and, right. and other stuff and, and really make it more of a, you know, let's stain our shirts with silicone. Well, yeah. Well, you know, what I'll do too is, is, um, cause we'll probably have time where we'll be, I'll bring a, uh, I'll break a piece of granite and we'll put it back together again because we'll clamp it and let it set for 45 minutes while we're doing the SGA. And then we'll actually mm -hmm. come back and grind and, and do some work on some granite too. If people want to see that. Do you uh, have enough connections in the, uh, the fabricators to where you could get a chunk of a granite countertop that's all kicked up with hard water deposits and soap? Um, I think so. Yeah, this one company we do, this one company that we're a preferred vendor for, I'll, I'll look into that tomorrow. I'll see what I can come up with. I don't think people realize how easy it is and how much you can accomplish just with the right product in a rag. Yeah, let yeah, I mean, alone we'll, a Makita and six products. Six yeah, well, I can show them the basic with what they can get into right out of you know tile and grout cleaning into the like I said the ceiling the the cleaning conditioning light polishing that anybody yeah. can learn how to do with basic products. But I'll also show uh, some guys some repairs there too if they'd like to see that chip you know chip fill fill the chip and um and even maybe some basic grinding techniques on yeah, scratch fill the chip real cool yeah but for, for the carpet guys thinking about getting into this and i've said this a, a, more times i can count but when you're done with a carpet job typically you're in the kitchen with the you know the owner of the house typically right. the wife and, mm -hmm. and you know she's writing the check asking you for instructions on how to get the carpet dry and when she'd be clean last and you're shooting the breeze maybe your helper's out there wrapping up the truck or something but if they have granite countertops nine times out of ten if you go and spec by the spigot they're going to have yep. a buildup of hard water deposits that's where it starts and, uh, yep. you kind of you know you, you like you said don't be the used car salesman but but work your way over there and show some interest in it and ask them you know oh does this bother you you know have you, have you tried getting this mm -hmm. off of here and nine times out of ten, it, yeah, it drives me nuts. I don't know what to do. I'm afraid to scratch it. Or my, my husband said, you know, he would take care of that. Right. Or the last guy couldn't do it. But it's so easy. Go, you know, just, oh, I'll be right back. And go out and mm -hmm. grab a razor blade and grab some magic owls or stone, stone pro. Yep. Uh, stone, stone scrub. scrub right. In a rag. And in like. Less than five minutes, you can pull all the bulk of that off. I mean, you got to be careful. Mm -hmm. You don't want to start going all the way around the sink. You're going to be in there three hours. Right. But when it's accumulated on, the, on the, you know, everything but the lightest of granites, you can make a hero mm -hmm. and start a conversation where, oh, maybe she's going to have you come back and do the bathtubs. And the, That's exactly where I go to. Whenever I go to the, the counter, I go right to the faucet. Because 90% of people never wipe up. Yep, they never wipe yeah. up the water around there, and there's always scale. And then it starts to dull that in the front edge, the leading edge of the sink, you know, at the counter. Yeah. That's where it's going to be dulled too, because that's where the majority of the work is. And then you point out, you go over to the corner on the on the longer length of the, the granite, and you say, you see the shine here? Do you see how much shine you've lost? Well, why don't yeah. I show you a basic polish that I can do that's reasonable that will bring that back? Now there's a fine line, and that's what I'll show guys in the class of what a polishing compound can do versus when do you have to break out the diamond resins and physically 
grind that uh, wear out to then turn around and go back up through your finer grits to polish to blend that in. So, I mean, there, it, it's, it's pretty simple. I mean, it, it takes a little bit of training to understand that, but, you know, once you use the compound, you start to understand what you can and can't do with the polishing compounds, where that fine line is between a uh, maintenance polish and, and or now do we restore this. Yeah. Yeah. All this stuff sounds confusing, and it's funny because I've taken the, uh, the Stone Pro class a couple times now, and you watch the first morning where guys come in and they know nothing. They don't know, you know, what DIP stands for. They've never right. held a Makita, yeah. and right. Rob just throws them in, and they're just, oh, my God, I don't know what to do. They stand back, and they just watch. Right. By the end of the three days, they know all the lingo, all the acronyms. They know how to hold mm -hmm. that Makita. It is, it's really easy to learn. Yeah. And there's not a whole lot to it, actually. You know, you just got to, like everything else in the cleaning industry, you got to learn how to stay out of trouble, not over, not over promise. Yep. But, uh, well, that's where know. I start. That's where I started <laughs> my classes. I, I start with the basics, just like what you would if you're teaching somebody how to clean carpet. They got to, they got to know the difference between ala polyester cleans versus the nylon, you know, why you don't use high pH and heat on wool, those kind of things, right? So, you know, right. what I'm saying is I use that same basic technique when I teach hard surface or stone is, okay, here's the different types of stone. Here's what you don't do to that stone and why. You don't put acid on marble, travertine, or limestone, right? Uh, you know, granite is, is three times harder than most travertine or, or some marbles. And so here's why you have to use. So just understanding the basics. It is simple, but you have to understand the principles behind what you do and why you do it. And then it, it all fits together as you start to physically, you know, the kinetic side of it start to do it. Uh, the, the, the principle side starts to make more sense. And that's why we do both the hands-on and I do a day of classroom and I do a day of hands-on in my, my classes. It sounds like you're busy enough at work here after three years that yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to juggle this somehow. I'm, I'm starting to get more requests, though, to teach. So it's going to be I'm going to have to have a, a lengthy conversation with my business partner and say, you know, I've always been a teacher. I've always loved to teach, but I love to do the work, too. Just means we're going to have to hire quality guys, too, because I'm, I'm an owner-operator. You know, I love doing stonework. And the other guys, yeah. the guys do the carpet and the poster. I do the stone. My business partner, I've trained him over the last two years how to do stone, and so he's proficient enough now to – to be able to diagnose the floor because the thing with stone is you have to know how to diagnose how much wear is in the floor, how bad is the wear, and then what is the procedure that, that makes sense to bring the floor back to the expectation the customer is looking for and can they afford it. How much uh, just tile and grout are you doing any day, these days? Or oh, we still, well, yeah, we, we still do quite a bit and the guys usually do that. You know, I mean, we'll, my business partner and I are focused on building the stone side because that's where that's how lucrative it can be. But it takes more work to get that yeah. customer. But the average ticket, right. like I said, we you know our tickets are generally about three. You know our lowest tickets are twenty five hundred, and our average tickets about five to six grand. So you know the tile and grout and the carpet we kind of leave to the guys because Larry and I are out there trying to get the stone jobs to to get the big ticket money. But we hey. still do it. Yep. Yeah. You, uh, I assume you have a shop. The Larry owns the shop. No, actually, we work out of his his home. We don't have a shop here because he had he had a you know an area where he worked out of. But that, as we he scaled back down, he was up to like six employees oh, with boy. I think five vans, and so he scaled back. And when he scaled back, it's now um, out of out of his home. Uh, the, you know, he lives right around the corner for me, and so it worked out perfect. And the guys said they keep, they take the van to their house. They drive the van to their home. And then they have their, we have a manager and he sets up the jobs and they go to the jobs and Larry and I go out and we do the stone work together. So the guys do the tile and grout and the carpet and then Larry and I are out. Oh, Larry's actually working with you. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I had to train him because he didn't know anything yeah. about stone. So for, he's gotten, you know, two and a half years of, of my ugly mug every day. And me, you know, telling them the different techniques that I've learned and use and, and how to diagnose the floor. And now he's actually very proficient at it. He, he could, uh, he says he doesn't want to do it without me or wouldn't feel comfortable with me without doing it. But I, he is, he's, he's more than competent to do it. Um, he's just not, he's, 
you know, I mean, being working for legend brands and, and being on the sales side, um, I'm the guy who talks to the customer. He's a little bit more reserved. You know what I mean? So you got to know how to talk to your customer. You have to know how to not be a used car salesman, but educate them and help them make a quality decision yeah. based upon yeah. the, the, the quality of your educating them. And then they feel like they're uh, not being sold something, but they're selling themselves and you're proving it. Cause we, when we know we have a quality customer, we actually do a test polish for them when we have the time. And when we know that they're the right customer that fits our customer base, we'll spend the extra hour 30 minutes to an hour to actually do a physical polish because that's what sells it. Because the last guy came in, measured it, said, oh yeah, we'll get you estimated. It's probably going to be in this ballpark and didn't show him anything. So price has no meaning without value. And the way you build value is by demonstrating the quality of your work and what they're going to uh, receive for that money spent. And when you do that, it's almost an automatic sell. When they see Oh, that's what I'm paying for. Oh, that looks fantastic. Okay, really, it takes you that much time? Yes, that's why it's two dollars a square foot. Right, right. Who's answering your phones? You got an office girl? Yeah, we have a manager. Yeah, he he schedules, and then when when he, the other guy needs some work, he goes out and helps him. They used to be a two man crew, and now he's been you know where he'd answer the phone and work, and that was getting a little too much, and so especially since we added in the stone side, so now he manages. Uh -huh. And then when the other guy needs help, he goes out and helps. But with, we get this big job. It's all hands on deck. We get this nine floors of terrazzo that, you know, from 1910. It's a historic building. You where need we're more people. You might need to hire yeah. Joel Riggs or something. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Give me a call, Joel. <laughs> yeah, he's a good guy. There's some yeah. good guys in it. There's some good stone guys in the Valley. Brady Wright and Joel Riggs. Brady, and, yeah. Lance Goldman. Um, There's some good guys in town. Brady works for who? What's that company? Uh, no, he, he was in partnership with Sir Grout. Now he's out on his own. He has his own company. Oh, he did? Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. that's recent. Yeah. Yep. Sir Grout, that's real the name? That, that's a franchise. Sir Grout it's is a franchise. franchise. Yeah. It's the... And he, was, he had a business partner that he worked with for Sir Grout, and now he's that's gone right. out on his own. Yeah. The, the the his partner who owned that Sir Grout, I did his parents' place up in Tahoe. A bunch mm -hmm. of goofy travertines. Something was going wrong where we thought we might have had the color seal it, but I was able to somehow I was able to blast out something that was going wrong with the grout. I forget the details, but Brady was saying, Yeah, you could color seal it. He, he had a lot of input on getting me that job. That yeah, Br cool. Brady's uh very, very, very knowledgeable. Yeah, he, he yeah. knows, look, I'll just be straight up with you. He knows more about stone than, than I do. He's, and, he's a great uh, guy. Pretty positive he's coming to, to Mikey's Good. Fest as well. Yeah, yeah. He, he's a, he's a really cool apartment. dude, too. He's a cool dude. He's, he's you, real laid back. And you said you think that uh, one of those Phoenix houses has granite counters? I can't recall. Yes, it does. Because um, I remember Steve from Stone Pro was, was conditioning those last time we were there. It was the one in Central Phoenix. Okay. Yes. Yep. Okay. It was the one that was That's down the there one. just off of like uh, 7th Ave or Central. It, that was the one. Yeah. The, the big one. Remember the multi story one? They had three the levels. Like not. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's that the one that has grant. Yeah, that has grant. Okay. Okay. Yep. okay. So we'll do so that. Yeah, boys and girls, there's going to be a lot to learn at this event. And that's just Brian. I got like <laughs> eight or nine other instructors with, with uh, different specialties coming. We got a guy, oh, what the heck's his name? Matt Pentecost. He's real big on uh, polishing, conditioning, synthetic counters. Oh, that's good. I, I know we have that there. That's something my, my, my kid's done it a bit. I've never, never really touched it. Um, but that's that's a huge market. Heck, I was reading a, a thing on my Google News feed yesterday where all these designers saying how ugly and horrible granite it is. They would never use it, recommend it, and they're all into the, the courts. And that's yeah, ES courts is, is tricky. It's we don't even do that yet because you have to know the agglomerate type and the base that it's either epoxy or cement base, and you can you don't know what you're doing. You can burn that epoxy and it uh, oh, yeah. the resin in there. It's gonna be bad. That's so you really got to get. Don't don't any of you out there, boys and girls, don't think you can just get into ES quartz engineered stone. 
uh, overnight. It's uh, I'm still looking at getting into that and get some training on that because you got to know what you're doing. You're gonna want to because it's taking over. Oh, I know. We uh, see it all the time. We got you yeah. and Matt Reg Rogers. You know he's a CRV king. He's gonna be doing the wood floors again at the hotel and then scrubbing away at all the houses. Right. Uh, Seeger's gonna demonstrate his uh, super speed sealer. You, have you done that? The the mop and slop. No, no. I'm oh, I'm. I want to see that. Yeah. No, we're kind of old. We still, we do mass application with the squeegee, but we just, as yeah. a general purpose, we always, because the customers love it. It's like they see us, we buff the floor with a, with a cotton bonnet because it goes quick and it's like that spit shine on your shoe. Oh, they yeah, like to see that. Yeah. Yep. There's only, there's only two products you can do that with Marks and Cobbs. Right. Uh, right. Mr. Color Seal is going to be there. I think his wife's on here right now. I think I saw her slip in. So we're going to, Okay. Touch on that. We got a uh, uh, BLM OP guys coming from Trinity. Mm -hmm. um, Grant Baberstock's going to do upholstery. That guy does a lot of upholstery. I think it's easier on him. You know who Grant is, right? Hey, I'm from Australia. He was at the last one. Yeah, he had a good yeah. – I enjoyed his – you had him speak about his business and how yeah. he has to get Grant's picked up by uh, – he has to get picked up by a driving service, and he loads all his stuff in the – portable stuff in the back, and they – take him to his job site, and then they pick him back up because he's legally blind. Yeah, he's a cool dude. Legally blind. Good. Legally yeah. blind. Yeah, he's out there cleaning every day. He's really good at upholstery. I think it's easier on him because he can get his nose nose yeah. to see it. It's carpet. Yeah. yeah. It's five feet down. Yeah. Uh, we got a glass guy, Steve Dillon, the hug master, is coming, and he's going to fix scratches and soap scum and all that. Oh, that's awesome. I'd so like to see cool. that. Yeah. That's cool, Adam. Like that's good. Yeah. And then we got all kinds of. Uh, I got I got other guys here. But, uh, I'm gonna keep this short, but you can get on. Let me uh, let me put the link on here. If you guys okay. haven't seen the info on this event, but just just be able to hang out with a guy like Brian for three or four days at the pool party and pick his brain on this all kind of stuff. <laughs> uh, I might drive him crazy. They might need to see a psychiatrist after that. <laughs> Mr. At least, at least have some good. Right. At least have Super some good, bad. good, good B and B beer and bourbon, man. That'll fix anything. <laughs> some B and B. Well, yeah, we got Cramor who's going to have his um, his uh, tap room open by then. He's actually opening yeah. a, like a legal I've, tap I've, room. I've seen his uh, yeah his recipes on beer. I'm anxious to try it myself. Yeah. So when what day are we doing that? After is it? Uh, I think the day Friday or Wednesday after the cleaning, we're not that far from his facility. Right. And uh, he talked about getting a bus or something, a party bus. Perfect. So we'll, we'll go somehow with we'll Uber or whatever, cab, hop in Perfect. the truck mounts, get over yep. to Cranmore's place, and then somehow awesome. get back to that more Haro with no, no drunk driving. We'll, we'll take right. care of that. That's quite a haul, though. He's, he's in Surprise. So, so Surprise to Scottsdale is. 50 oh, miles. Uh-oh. Is that a white issue? He said it wasn't that far. Well, if, you, if you're talking about where his flooring company is, it's in Surprise. And, no, and, it's in my warehouse. Oh, the warehouse well, then, you, okay. All right, never mind. Disregard. I don't know what I'm talking about. He's probably That's got just, somewhere anyway, else. Anyway, there, yeah. I put the link into the event for more information or you want to sign up or whatever. But. That's that's cool. That's that's some That's some good happenings right there. It's a lot going on. We're going to yeah. go off-roading on Saturday. We have the – well, it's already sold out. We have the Legend Brands uh, Tour on uh, Tuesday. Yeah. That's a good one there. I mean, he, it's like a, uh, you know, I, don't, I don't work for them anymore, but I can tell you they, they know how to build a truck mount. That's for sure. You've been up to yeah. the Prescott facility, right? Well, of course. I used to work out of there. Yeah. yeah. Super impressive. Yep, it is. Yeah, yeah that's They've, quite the event. Uh, it's taking a lot of planning. <laughs> Let me tell you, yeah. it's like every day I, I got to work on them more and more. Just, just don't let don't anybody die in the don't, don't let anybody die in the desert like almost happened last time. That's why, <laughs> yeah, no bikes allowed this time. <laughs> right, right. Only four wheelers, or you can bring a lot of water. But yeah, that yeah, nobody dies in the desert this time. Close, man. It's so yeah, close. I know. If he hadn't have bought a Legend Brands truck mount, see you there, he probably would have got left behind. Wow. We were all kind of convinced that he was ahead of us. So, so those reward points Ray really do Brand pay off. I'm going <laughs> to go let, look that way. Let your sure brand rewards points. Right. 
That's good. Just Justin Folk, he's coming again. And uh, yeah, if he that ever six fifty saved his life. <laughs> no Seriously, doubt. Incredible awesome. story. All right. Well, I'm gonna uh, get this on YouTube for those of you that came in later. Whatever, there's a lot of good information we talked about. We don't want to give it all away. You got to save some for the event. Uh, but being yep. able to work side by side with Brian at uh, the Ron McDonald House of all places, not just some dude's garage, yes, is, is an incredible opportunity. And uh, man, what a, what a learning event we got coming, huh, Brian? That's awesome. Yeah, and there's some good stuff going on. I'm, you know, I, what the stuff you just mentioned, like with uh, Steve and the glass, man. I'm looking forward to seeing that. You know, getting the glass. Uh, yeah. That's that that's the, that's the tricky stuff. You got to know what you're doing when you're working. Scratch removal from glass. I, I definitely want to see that. So when you do a shower stall and they got that glass door all coated up with, with the same soap scum that, mm -hmm. you know, is on the walls, are you dabbling in it? or? Just um, yes, to a certain degree. So what we'll do is we'll use a, a extreme hog hair pad and a stone scrub. And there's another product you can get at um, that we found works really well. And we just happened to stumble upon it. But Wyman's, you can – Wyman's glass stop. Uh, glass stove top cleaner you can get it at home depot wyman's glass stove top Green? cleaner uh, what's that well, it's w-i-e-m-m-a-n-s oh, like bottle right for glass for the the, the flameless count uh cooktops yes exactly yeah wyman's glass stove yeah. top cleaner on a hogs air pad and then the makita that works, and it works huh? yeah we if I just caution everybody, you know, if you're going to use a razor blade, you better know what you're doing because if you use two yeah. sides of a razor blade, you'll scratch glass. You only use one side of a razor blade when you're doing glass, just like with stone, because it curls the end of the razor blade. But anyway, uh, we do dessert. And then there's a new product that I got from, I'll just plug them because I think it's good, um, from the guys at Easy Stone Care, Cameron. Uh, he's in Palm Desert in California. They have a two-stage glass cleaner, or excuse me, sealer. It's really high dollar and really expensive, but I've been using it on water features and pool tiles, and you can, it's made for glass uh, shower doors, and the stuff is amazing, but it's expensive. you got to charge for it. But it's have once you, you used, get it cleaned, uh, you Magic it Owls, Glass and Metal Magic? That's what I use. No, you keep telling me about that, and i gotta, I got to order some and bring it in, but... We don't do glass on every every shower because usually it's so bad. And then when we tell them the price and then when we tell them what the sealer is for that, because you shouldn't clean it. I mean, if you can seal it along with the cleaning, it's an added benefit. Um, but it's, it's, it's tricky and it's there's some, you know, probability of you scratching it. You don't want to scratch it. So we don't do it always. It really depends on how bad it is because it can get pretty bad, especially – here in Phoenix where we have super hard water, but it's good service to add. If it's light, you can sometimes get it off with the, the uh, stone scrub or the Wyman's glass cleaner with a hog hair pad, which is get a little bit more abrasiveness to it. Um, is that Wyman's and, is yeah. a white cream when you rub yes. in your fingers, can you feel exactly. a little grit? That's right. No. Yep. Yeah, I bet you it's identical to the- uh, it, But we found it, it actually worked, yeah, right. We, we found it worked better than what we were using before, which was the stone scrub. There's something in it, maybe like with Magic Owl. Stone scrub, stone yeah. scrub has, its, has its uniqueness, but it doesn't, I don't think it addresses glass and excessive no. buildup. No, there's been guys that have made that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's been guys that made that comment. So yeah, the Wyman's has worked great for us. You can get it at Home Depot of all places. They have a whole line of Wyman's in there. So I see Sager Wyman's stuck Wyman's. in here. Um, he's got three thumbs up for the uh, the storytelling day, and maybe I, maybe I forgot uh -huh. to go over that. But that's for a lot of people. That's the best day. Yep. As far as learning, because I, I just got some great speakers coming in, real movers and shakers that are going to spill their guts. Right. And spend you know whatever forty five minutes to an hour telling basically telling their life story. Uh, let me go over that real quick. Ben Surdy. Ben runs a Christ, I don't know. They might be up to 20 trucks in Seattle, Washington. So super tough economy to hire carpet cleaners in. There's so many easier ways, you know, to make your make your 20 bucks an hour, you know, making mm -hmm. YouTube videos or something. Uh, but he's doing every service imaginable, you know, all the restoration and rug cleaning, everything. And 
if you've been on the forums, you know, it wasn't all that long ago. Ben was a one trucker, you know, like the rest of us. And I don't, I don't know where he got the drive or the, the, the metal mindset to pull this off in Seattle of all places, but super impressive. Um, Bob Pruitt, who's been cleaning off and on forever. He's down in Florida and he got back in at, geez, man, I think Bob's like 65 years old or something. Decided to get back in, just loves it. And he's using his uh, minty fresh breath and his snow white hair to, to get all the designers and decorators and whatnot to, to call him so he's not, you know, doing the grungy apartments. Right. Uh, Jim Ackman, you know Jim. Jim's been around yep. forever, 40 year cleaner. Yep. And he's got a real unique approach to his business. Probably spends more time skiing than he does cleaning, but uh, I'm looking forward to his presentation. Are you, talking about big, are you talking about Big Jim? Big, big Jim. Jim? Big Jim. There's two big gyms, unfortunately. I think yeah. I think he's the smaller of the big gyms. <laughs> uh, a guy I haven't met, Chad Lopez, who um, Dusty Bell recommended. And I trust Dusty's opinion because Dusty's a real cool guy. But Chad uh, had a dad or has a dad that was running a you know, one-truck chemdry corporation. And, and this guy, Chad, like my kid, took a while to, to realize his fate of being a carpet cleaner. And he... He got mm. in with his dad and took his 20-year franchise and raised his the sales 600% in the first year. Wow. Probably by getting online. Awesome. And, yeah, hitting Got to hear that. Dry. Hey, FYI, uh, I, just, FYI, yeah. I just got I, FYI, I got an alert on my phone. I got 20% left on my battery. So just wanted in case I All black right. out here. Yeah. Okay. Kevin Bonds, he's a Sapphire poster boy. He's running four or five uh, trucks up in Spokane, Washington. Nice. And wow, it's Spokane. Four or five, that's right. obviously. Yeah. yeah. Man, Four to five well in Spokane. Yeah. Uh, we're going to let Grant speak again because Grant's just such a great storyteller. He, I mean, it's the only guy last year or year before I got a, a standing ovation. Yeah, he's good. So he, Enjoy he Part two. Um, maybe one or two other surprises, but then I got a, a, one of the guys is paying for a, a professional speaker, Chris Simning. To come in and i got a link to his video on this page and you ought to just check very unique story hmm. and according to my buddy who's good friends with him you know nobody leaves one of his presentations with a dry eye hmm. um he said some real challenging things happened to him in his life and now he's uh he's come out so of it and turned into a motivational of, speaker right probably. right motivational right yeah so we're gonna end out as, with long as, him. He, as long as he doesn't live in a van down by the river he's probably pretty good <laughs> I don't think so. uh, I'm trying to get this one guy as a carpet cleaner who's actually had to use the Ronald McDonald house extensively, not mm. not this particular Phoenix. But I want him to come in and you know talk about a lot of people that really don't realize what happens at a Ronald McDonald house. You know, it's that's, it is it's touching. Yeah, yeah. Remember that last, like, what are you donating all Get that stupid clown pay for this stuff. You know, they don't, they don't yeah. understand how they you get guys, I, re, I, I missed it, but the when last time you guys were in Phoenix, you did that, and that family came out with that young man that had brain oh, cancer, boy. and they gave you that card. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, I missed that. I I remember that. Yeah. Here and seeing that. Yep. Yeah. yeah that they was... were. They were. I mean, you you can't get more gratitude than that, right there. Uh, I had Baker and and Randa and I. Uh, <laughs> we were all just old, man. Yeah, so yeah. Cool. That is all right. It's what we're hour it. and a half. I'm sure your wife's been in the back there tapping your foot. It's probably hers. Like lost down there twenty percent of her patients waiting on you. <laughs> That's some your phone, it's that's all good. <laughs> it's all good. Yep. All right, bud. Always Looking good to talk to you. It. And, uh, we'll yep. be in touch soon. Awesome. Get some of that RTV. Let me know how it works. Yeah, but I'll be getting. Uh, I'll get in, get a hold of Josh and get some uh, super grout additive and all oh, that yeah, stuff. Do that. some mock up on that. Yeah, yeah. He's in. I think he's in Roseville or he's up there around Sacramento somewhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't know what's going on. I will. Cool. I will definitely. Good. Hey, it's good talking to you and and thanks everybody for joining in on this. Hopefully, I didn't put you to sleep and had a few laughs so. Looking forward to seeing everybody, even let's them, the uh, even them, even them blokes from, even them blokes from down under. Yeah, here, let's do a knuckle butt. Boom! There you go. Fireworks. All right, go Blues and uh, right. enjoy that hockey yep. next week. It's going to be uh, fantastic. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking it'll go seven. If it does, watch out.
Yeah. Yeah. Once my team's out, I want every round to go seven. I'm a pimp for the puck. That's for sure. I love that hockey. All right. All, All right. right. Good night. Good night. Later, buddy. Okay. Good night. Later.